The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, folks. Um, I'm going to have Norman Winsky uh, on at the half hour. We didn't quite get to finish up with him. Uh, he was the one who helped us with uh, trying to understand what J.P. Morgan and Evangeline Adams, who was his full-time astrologer, uh, you know, part of their history and stuff. And but we never really got a chance to look into some of the work that Norman has done and and we will do that at the uh, at the half hour we'll post some of the things that he's looking at and he has some very interesting things and he's quite good at what he does so I think we can all learn a little bit from it now the first chart uh, that I've posted into the room today is um, the seasonals that I get from uh, Larry Williams um, Larry has been around for a very long time I met him in 1962 and uh, he's uh, quite successful at what he's done. He's ran for Senate a couple times uh, unsuccessfully, but um, his daughter's been up for a couple Academy Awards, Michelle Williams. Uh, he's lived a very colorful life. Uh, he's a few years younger than me, but a heck of a lot healthier and a really nice fellow I've known for a long time. And the stuff that he publishes and researches, I've always tried to uh, keep on top of that. When I was at Drexel during the years, of uh, 676 through 81, I think I spent close to $80,000 just buying research and stuff uh, from Larry Williams, all of it very well spent. But what he's showing here is the seasonal tendencies uh, of the market going back uh, over 100 years. Now, he's using the ES here, uh, which hasn't been around for 100 years, of course. That didn't start until the 50s. But uh, it's basically what uh, the market is, is doing. And y you can do it with the Dow Jones. Uh, you can do it with, uh, you know, the NASDAQ didn't start till 72. But what it's showing here is the seasonal tendency of the market to rally into May. And that's the old. Uh, market adage that you get is sell in May and go away. So we do have a positive bias in stocks. We've been saying that for quite a while here, ever since May 13th for sure, because that was the mother of all lows uh, from a technical standpoint, because we hit that perfect 61% retracement in the New York Stock Exchange Index. Uh, we also made the 50% level in the um, Dow Jones uh, Industrials, and uh, it certainly looks like you know we do want to uh, do want to go higher in here that's basically what it looks like uh, from uh, my uh, perspective anyway as you can see here from the chart that I posted here on the New York Stock Exchange index uh, we really exploded off of here uh, on that March 13th date that means if you break that level I know it looks like a natural trend line there which it certainly is but it's it's more important than that because as uh, our guest Bill Ehrman pointed out, uh, last week when we had him on on Wednesday, that that number was mathematically perfect going back to 1982 uh, to uh, 1974 and again 1995. In other words, all those numbers came in perfectly to that date at May 13th, uh, March 13th. So we really have to uh, respect that that line and that date and everything like that that's the main thing that is uh, you know really necessary you know that's uh, that's really the important thing to keep in mind because once we break that then we will have a downtrend until that happens uh, I'm not looking for a downtrend until uh, probably sometime around mid-April. I believe the number is around the 20th that we have for the Bradley date. We have a, a small one on the 6th, and then we have another one. We really didn't do anything with uh, the March 19th uh, solar eclipse uh, or the new moon. Uh, none of that seemed to stop the market because we made a higher high today in the S&P off of Friday. I mean, it was only up a little bit, but it still made a higher high, which, in fact, it shouldn't have done if it did that so um, things are okay I mean I think we're we're getting ready for something really big here uh, it hasn't happened yet 
uh, the contrary opinion or the number of bullish people versus bearish people is still at an all-time record. Margin debt is still increasing. All of those things are usually negative to the market, but that's not happening. Um, we have uh, Treasury bonds and Treasury notes selling off a little bit today, but frankly, you know, not very much at all. They're basically holding their own, given the fact where we are through the, uh, you know, the rest of these cycles that we've been watching for sure. Now, I would like to uh, mention a little bit uh, about seasonals now, because seasonals only work, uh, well, it's just like everything else. They only work about 70% of the time, but when they fit, uh, those are the ones that you really want to pay attention to because when you're watching a seasonal, you're looking at an average of, of many years. In other words, it's doing its, its best to uh, build a curve to fit what it's supposed to be doing as opposed to a Bradley indicator where you're doing a, a series of energy points coming off dates from several planets. So there are two different types of graphs that are there. So the seasonal is based on historical and the Bradley is based on things that are uh, supposed to be happening into the future. So I hope you understand that particular one. I'd like to share uh, one other uh, that Larry uh, sent me that is uh, very interesting, and that is the uh, Treasury bond, because this is one that we've been watching for quite some time also. We've been bearish on it. Uh, did a, you'll notice that this seasonal did an incredible job of, uh, you know, calling the high that we had, uh, you know, way back in uh, January, excuse me, February, around the 15th of February, and then we had a bottom, and now we're still down here uh, until around the 6th of April. So you want to be looking at the short side of the bonds uh, during that time. Now, I posted into uh, Tiger TV, I posted in, uh, in fact, I better do it right now. I don't think I've done that yet. I want to do it right now. It is right here. I want to post the, the Treasury notes to show you how close they are to the 61% retracement uh, of the move that we've had uh, since the uh, that February uh, 15th high. We're almost at a 61% retracement, and we're coming into that level right now, which is uh, right around the 129 level. The high today has been, uh, I believe, 128.28, uh, so it's very, very close uh, to that 61% retracement of what we're watching at that particular point. So these are seasonals. Uh, there's all kinds of seasonals on commodities and things, but I wanted to share with you uh, the ones on the stocks that we're looking at because it fits in with a potential April high. Uh, we've um, have to thank Basil Chapman for his work and also Steve Rhodes because both of them have been very, very uh, constructive to the market, which they should be, and especially uh, Basil because the way he handles uh, the VIX index, the VIX index uh, just can't get out of its own way, folks, no matter uh, what they try to do with it, it just doesn't want to move up. And that means there's just absolutely no fear in the market. And there shouldn't be because things keep going higher and higher and higher and higher. So there's nothing else that uh, that you could be looking at. We've had a question from one of our uh, listeners uh, about the cattle market. And I wanted to uh, bring you up, up to date of what we're watching on the daily cattle chart. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, completed a, uh, a really nice uh, ABCD pattern down here at this 147 level. Uh, we made the three drive to a top pattern way back in November. We uh, got to thank our good friend Rich Anderson from Anderson Capital Management for that because, you know, he was telling us that this thing was getting ready to come unglued and it dropped, uh, you know, 24 cents, which is uh, $10,000 uh, in cattle bunny. And uh, it did it with a beautiful ABCD pattern to the downside. But where we stand right now is uh, we had a really strong bounce off the bottom. We pulled down to a 382 retracement, which is the minimum retracement that you can get for a BC swing. And then we went up and heading towards the uh, 162 level one more time, right around 161.80 is where the 61% uh, retracement comes in. And it also completes the ABCD pattern. And that would uh, complete a, a perfect Gartley pattern. Uh, at that time. So I hope that answers the question for uh, Mr. J that uh, had a question from the room, and I will be happy to uh, 
I hope I can answer that pretty good. So we'll see what happens. Now, we, we, we have another question about Priceline. I don't know why that seems to be the pet char, the pet, uh, the pet stock of this uh, radio show, but I think it's because of Priceline Charlie down in La Paz, who happens to be, I believe, in Atlanta this week doing some buying of uh, equipment. Okay, we're going to put up the Priceline here. And as you can see, we've had a little bit of a bounce, but we still look like we're heading down uh, towards that 1100 level. This this stock is much weaker than the rest of the market, and so I would uh, I would be looking for selling opportunities in this. This is a thousand dollar stock, folks. So it's really uh, it's not a big uh, uh, it's not for most people. That's the that's basically the bottom line of what we're watching here. Now, when I first started trading stocks, which was back in 1965 in San Luis Obispo, California at Walston and Company, it was owned by Ross Perot. And uh, the most expensive stock on the New York Stock Exchange at that time was Superior Oil, an oil company. The problem was is that you could not sell the stock short because there was just not any stock available to borrow. You couldn't even borrow two shares if you wanted to. And that was my, my first experience. I wasn't trading in that stock, but I was trying to understand it. And um, they were showing me uh, at the firm there that there were certain stocks on the restricted list that you could not get stock to even sell. And that's uh, you know pretty much what happened with that one. And it made it uh, very difficult to uh, see what... Uh, was going on because no stock to sell that's a good thing now selling selling stock short is a good thing because it brings liquidity into the market it really does uh, it adds a great deal of liquidity to the market and we really need that in order for markets to you know to function uh, you know perfectly i know with the high frequency trading and all these alpha programs and betas and all the other stuff that you have you know it's uh you know it's uh, it's pretty uh it's pretty hard to understand all of it, but it's still going on. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648, and we're going to have Norman Winsky on at the break, and he'll have some really good information. He's a very smart fellow, and uh, uh, as you realize from what we had last Thursday, he made a very interesting guest. He had a lot of good feedback on that, so uh, we'll see what's going on. Okay, now... We want to talk a little bit about the euro because the euro is having a pretty good rally today. I wanted to bring this up so we can take a quick look at it. And you'll see that we've got, uh, we made almost a perfect 786 retracement in the euro from the high we made uh, on Friday. It missed it by about five pips. Uh, that means that we should be uh, ready to uh, pull back because we had this really strong rally back on the 18th. We backed off to a 61% retracement coming in on the 19th. And now today we've rallied up to a 786 retracement up at that 109 level. Now, if this is true to form, what should happen here is that we should form a Gartley pattern uh, in this on a very long-term basis going, but well, long-term for us is uh, is uh, two weeks, which it certainly is. But we should pull down into that 105.40 level. Okay, we're gonna take a few breaks here, or pay, take a break to pay some bills. 877-927-6648. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 5% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800 851 0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Larry takes your phone calls now. now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have our first caller, our first lucky winner of the lottery here at TFNN, Mr. Z from Philly. I hope it's a million. I'm sorry, I hope it's a million dollars, Larry. Oh, at your tax bracket, it wouldn't even wouldn't even uh, 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 stop a stop an ant from going downhill. What can I do for you, my friend? Larry, congratulations! I do have to point out you did your show last Wednesday. That was the uh, the 18th at 12 o'clock. Uh, I saw you uh, you identified a, a terrific buy in gold at 11:48.47. So it's rallied 40 bucks off there. I wanted to ask you, um, now that it's rallied, can you just share with us wh what sort of scenarios you can envision for this rally phase, you know, in the next couple of weeks? Sure, John. The best way to uh, look at this is to, well, the best way that I look at it is I, I do an hourly chart, you know, uh, just like, well, you do multiple charts just like I do. But the hourly chart really shows the swings that you really need to see, you know, swings of 11 to $17. And as you mentioned, we rallied 40 some dollars off the bottom. But as you can see here, we have a very distinct AB equals CD pattern coming in at the 1195 level. Um, that's a very, very important number because it's a 61% retracement from the high at the end of February. So, you know, we're still basically in a downtrend in the gold. But if we can get gold to 
to close above 1225 here the next couple of weeks, which is not very far away, $50, uh, we've got a chance for gold to make a major turn here. I haven't given up the ghost yet in it, uh, mainly because silver held up so well. Uh, you know, silver only made a 78% retracement. Uh, of the last move down, whereas gold went to about 88%. So there's uh, still a chance. We don't see any uh, indication here in uh, the commitment of, tra uh, not commitment of traders, but in open interest where we, where we would like to see more volume and more open interest coming in. But we're not seeing that in either gold or silver. Uh, so we still have to watch those also. What's your gotcha. opinion, John? You're, pretty, you're a pretty good gold trader. What do you think? Yeah, I uh, I'm trading it actively. Uh, I'll tell you, I am uh, I'm on the bullish side, but I I frankly see um, a zillion different scenarios. Um, so um, uh, frankly, I'm kind of inconclusive at present. So I'm being kind of cautious. Well, being cautious is a good trading uh, good trading point. That's for sure. Uh, you you're go. right. I agree with you. You know, we've had a we're in a seven day rally right now off of that 11:40 area. And uh, so we're due for a correction, whether it comes here at 1195 or higher or lower, I don't know. But I am looking for a correction. That's such a perfect uh, ABCD pattern from the 17th through the 20th and then the 20th to where we are right now that it makes it look like uh, we have a nice correction. And if it's equal to what we did the last time, this correction should come in. Uh, shouldn't be more than about uh, $25 at the very most, taking us down to about the 1170 to 1165 area where it would come into some really good uh, support. The 61% retracement of this move thus far would bring us right in to the, uh, around 1162. So uh, that's about $25 from where we are right now. So still the jury's still out. But I agree with you. Uh, I uh, I would like to be a buyer of gold if it backs off. Very good, Larry. I appreciate it. Um, you had uh, just done the euro, and thanks for doing that. And Basil did a fine job of describing uh, the bigger picture. Just wanted to ask your specific opinion. Now that uh, the euro has fallen from a dollar thirty nine May of two thousand fourteen down to one hundred five one hundred four here, uh, ten months later. Um, are you of the view, or do you think it's likely, rather, that the euro goes through, you know, a multi-week, multi-month bounce phase here? No. No, I don't, John. I, you know, you're watching it. You, you, you've heard the thing of the dead cat bounce. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Well, this is this is what we're looking at here. We have so many numbers coming in at uh, at 99 or par, uh, you know, 100 to 99, 100 to point to 99.00 in the euro. That this is just the first really good rally. We could rally easily back to the 112, 113 area, and still be very, very bearish. Now, there's yes, a possibility yeah. that this was a major low here, but frankly, I don't see that as of yet. In fact, what the market's doing right now is what we were posting earlier in the day is the the 786 retracement, and we just hit that in the euro in, in a matter of the last five minutes. So yep. that tells us that uh, if it gets above that, you know, 109.50, you know, then we've got a chance uh, to take a look at it. But we have we just flat out hit it just a few minutes ago. Hasn't done much, you know, but uh, we'll see if it, if it holds or not. Thanks very much, Larry. We'll hey, thanks for interview. calling in, my friend. I hope the snow melts before July. I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay, buddy. Here. Thanks for calling in. 877-927-6648. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com.
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate Educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, boys and girls, we're back with our friend Norman Winsky from Astro Trends. Norman, are you on the line with us? Yes, Larry, this is Norm Winsky from Good. Naples, Thanks for Florida. Me on show. <laughs> Good to have you on. Listen, Norman, the first chart that I put in was your uh, February preview. Yes, sir. Uh, things were going. What I'd want to do is just have you describe this just a little bit because I'd like to go in to your uh, astro predictive tool that you have uh, next. But just give the folks an idea of what you're looking at in February as far as how you keep them on the side of the market, right side of the market. So go ahead. You've got the, the mic. Take off. Okay. Thank you. I, my letter goes out once a month, usually toward the around the first of the month. And uh, every month I reprint the previous month's forecast and show you the results. And uh, the, I, you know, and so uh, here's how. It, if you're looking at the page here, we have the forecasted dates toward the top, and then down below we have the S. This is for the S and P for stocks now. And down below you can see that there's an S and P chart. And that there's little arrows there that correspond to the forecast of dates, so you can see how those worked out. The good, the good dates, the ones that worked, are, have little arrows. The, the the green arrows are bottoms, and the red arrow are, are tops. And uh, for February, we had uh, 12 dates, and 10 of the 12 were potentially profitable dates. So that's uh, 
pretty good. Yeah, you also keep a running total of these dates, too, uh, statistically for the folks, don't you? If you have that chart, that page will be going there in uh, just Shortly, a sure. Now, yes, what sir. I'd like to do, Norman, is to take the one with the uh, where you do your predictive uh, analysis uh, with planetary uh, your in planetary index. Right uh, now, we'll go. To, I think that's yeah. uh, coming up here, isn't it? Uh, yep, we got it up here now. Okay, that's on the next page, right? Yes. So uh, I do two types of analysis for this stock market. I, I don't do the the second one here, uh, the planetary index for the other markets, only for the stock market. Uh, and why is, why uh, is that, Norman? What's that? Why is that? Just more uh, data because I need available? A light, or? You know, I, this takes a lot of time. This takes two weeks to put my letter together. And, and also the stock market tends to be easier to forecast directionally than the other markets. Okay. But I'm doing a directional forecast here for the stock market on page two. It's a, you might call it Bradley style. It's not Bradley's model. I, you know was greatly influenced by Bradley. I read his book back in 1971. Uh, I think you have a book that talks about that. Uh, if you want to give yourself a, 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 I forget the name of your book, Larry, but if you want to give yourself a plug, this is a good time to do that. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> What's that again? It's okay. Everybody's bought it. It's sold out. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Norman. All right. So we have a, the blue line here is the forecasted line that was done, you know, sent out at the first of the month. First of, uh, this is for February, reviewing February. And then we had the black bars. The, I think this is the, probably, let's say here, the S&P, S&P 500, 15-minute bar chart overlaid on top of the forecast after the fact. So you can see uh, the correlation. That's okay. good. Now, the reason why you don't send out March is because you want people to understand that they have to make an honest effort to try to learn this stuff. So they have to contact you to see what that information is, correct? Uh the, that's correct, but also I gave them a little sampling of March coming up here in, I think, a few pages, okay? Yes, I remember that. So uh, just quickly, T-bonds, same principle as the S&P before, where we have the uh, forecasted dates and we have the uh, uh, the arrows on the charts here. We had five uh, forecasted dates for T-bonds, and we hit f uh, four out of five potentially uh, profitable uh, dra uh, dates there. Dollar was... Uh, uh, just just below that, and that was a six out of seven for eighty five point seven one percent. Moving ahead, we had a couple of dates pop up for the Great Britain, you know, United Kingdom. Uh, we monitored the uh, uh, FTSE for that, and also the uh, British pound. And for both of those, we uh, think we were two out of two for a hundred percent. Two out of two is pretty good. It's not a very big statistical thing, but it's better than zero for two for sure. There you go. Now, a question the that I want to show the folks here is there's a summary table here that we're uh, we're, we're looking at here, and that is uh, the statistical summary uh, for the month. Now, you keep that running every month, so people oh, yeah, want to go back. Accumulated. I keep a cumulative table also for the year. Okay. So if folks want to see this, they just go to Astro Trends, and you can give them an idea of how to uh, well, The best subscribe. way to do it is to call me. You can call me uh, on my landline or on Skype. And that you still have the same phone number, 618-1.618? Uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> you're just <laughs> My joking, phone number right, Larry, is what, 239-594-3939? The... No, uh, many years ago when I first came to Florida, I, I ended up with the uh, I got myself sort of a Fibonacci-looking uh, phone number, but uh, then I moved, and they wouldn't let me keep it. So I, I remember that. So we have 239-594-3939. 39, okay. And they can get through the multiple secretaries to get through to you, correct? Multiple me's to answer. That's right. I, we, You and I use the same secretary, M-E. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now a question that someone has asked us is, uh, how do you see the gold market right now, Norman? What, what's your opinion on that? Well, here's here's how that works. And my methodology is that I don't. Uh, it's the other. I do it the other way around. I let the planets tell me when and where to look. So if uh, I'd have to go look at look that up, I don't. Uh, I don't keep a running uh, outlook on any particular market unless unless the planetary events tell me I should be looking at that. I okay, try to keep have... my decision making out of this as much as possible. Well, I figure, that, I figure yeah. the less I think, the better it is. 
Amen to that. Boy, it's my, my worst enemy sometimes. We okay. have another question from one I of our... The gold was, uh, my recollection was that the gold was kind of uh, in the sleeping mode here this month. It wasn't uh, very prominent this month. Okay, well, that that's what it's been doing, is sleeping. Yeah. We have a uh, question. Did you have another from, question, Larry? Yes, we sure do. Uh, would you ask Norman to discuss the Bradley model and other astral cycles that have been calling for huge corrections and con con crashes over the last few years, and yet the market keeps chugging higher and higher? How that's do you great, handle those? How do you handle those? That's a great question. I have made a major advancement, which I'll, I'll be happy to show, uh, show the folks. In my planetary index, it's uh, my sort of version of the Bradley model where I've made a major advancement and I'm actually able to many often forecast w inversions. That's the problem. There's a flaw in the Bradley model that it goes along and it works great for a while, then all of a sudden it flips upside down. So the, Amen. There you go, Larry. You're right. So there you go. So uh, bad aspects, bad uh, planetary cycles can flip upside down, and now the bad is good and the good is bad. And so I'm able to forecast when that happens. So we had one of those here in the middle of March where we had uh, – so it started out going down, and then it, flipped, it turned around uh, right in the middle of March. And I forecasted that if you go in there, you know, if you've had a chance to read my Larry, uh, letter, Larry. Uh, I then, have. Uh, I, I can attest to that. You certainly did. That was the March 13th low, I believe. Exactly. And uh, we had a big thing happening over that weekend that said that we could get a polarity inversion over that weekend and a big change in trend, and we did. Okay. And we'll get back, so we'll be looking at that chart here in a few minutes. Okay, now, the the, the same person has asked a, uh, another question here, is what else do you use besides uh, Bradley? Because you're an you're a, a accomplished astrologer in all different areas, but what other things do you use besides the Bradley to help you with the cycles? Uh, Norman. I, I, well, let me just uh, uh, clarify. I don't really think that I use the Bradley. It's sort of Bradley style, Bradley inspired. But mm -hmm. I do my own, uh, you know, system on the on the planetary index. Would and, that be like then, your uh, own weighting? What, I think I think what they're really trying to ask is maybe what uh, factors or components go into calculating that. And I and just generally, I use geocentric. I use helio. That's from the point of view of the Earth. I look at the planets from the point of view of the Earth, heliocentric, that's looking at the planets from the point of view of the Sun, and then I also do the uh, U.S. Uh, aspects, that's the planets relative to the U.S. natal chart, July the 4th, 1776. So you actually, the natal charts are very important in these forecasts. Uh, some natal charts, there's a, sort of three categories of markets. The stock market, uh, like I said, has those three components. If we're doing T-bonds, because the U.S. government is involved, then we have the uh, sky planets like the geo and the and the helio, and then we also use the U.S. natal for that. Same, same also for the uh, U.S. dollar. With the U.S. dollar, I go one more step closer to doing natal in that I also have a natal chart specific to the U.S. dollar. That's what sort of differentiates it from the uh, from the T-bonds and the stocks. Okay, the same. Uh, our same listeners ask another question is about these inversion because this is the one that's made me pull my hair out. That's why I've only got two hairs on my head. And they say, "How do you know when it flips? It's going to invert." You actually think you can do that, Norman? Yes, sir. I'm going to well, prove that in a minute. Okay. All right. So fasten your seatbelts here. We'll get to that in just a okay, minute. Okay, buckle up, cowboys. We're ready to go. <laughs> what, what should we do next? All right, we uh, got the. Uh, uh, we're going past the chart now, the uh, statistical summary table there, and yes. now we're going. The next thing we're going to go uh, look ahead as of uh, all the big action was in the past uh, ten days or so, and mm -hmm. so I'm going to uh, kind of uh, step forward, but we're you know relative to February, but step back relative to today, just a, a few days here, and we're going back to you and I were just talking about uh, right around the weekend of the 14th there. The 13th, yes. and uh, over the 14th, as I have listed here on my I, page. I have that. Just just a second. Let me put this up for everybody, and they can take okay. a look at it. And uh, we'll be able to look at That's the one that you're uh, watching for your astral says, trend for uh, March, March 13th to March 20 forecast. Regular. Yeah, I see it. That's it right there. Okay, so item 1A, we have 3.14 yep. a.m. That was a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturn in Sagittarius turns retrograde. Mm -hmm. And so that's Saturday, your red arrow what, that you have, Mark. Just for some of the folks who don't know, let me talk about 
a direct and retrograde. The, the general category term is called a station point. This is due to the rolling motion of the earth, just like when you're driving on the highway and you're doing 60 and somebody passes you doing 70, if you happen to glance out your window for a moment and suspend your rational mind, uh, you might get the impression that you're actually going backwards by 10 miles an hour when you know that, in fact, you're going forward. So I'm sure everybody who's you know, dri driven their car has had that experience. And I've, I had uh, a few weeks back, I went to the grocery store, was pulling into my parking slot there, had my foot on the brake, it was crawling to a stop. And I happened to glance out of the corner of my eye, and I thought my brakes had failed, and I was going to crash in front of, into the car in front of me. Uh, then I realized, oh, that's just the car next to me backing out. You know, so it's so something similar like that happens with the planets because of the rolling motion of the Earth. If you were to go out every night and plot the planets, you would notice that it, uh, there are times at which uh, s certain planets look like they stop their motion and reverse the direction. When they stop, that's called the station point, and there's two kinds. One where they stop to t turn and go backwards, that's called retrograde. And one where they stop to go forward, that's called direct. So over the, on Saturday, the 14th in the morning, a Saturn turned retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius. And so, therefore, that has to do with uh, Saturn. It has to do with specifically with coffee and also uh, Sagittarius is oats. And then we have a general influence of all the everything for the stock market. So we want to watch for a change in trend also for the stock market. So we have coffee, oats, and stocks. And now to address the earlier question about the uh, planetary index and inversions, this is one of the things I have found uh, is an important factor, especially outer planets, that's from Jupiter on out, to forecast uh, polarity inversions. So now I've given away a major, a break, uh, a major uh, breakthrough here, uh, advancement, uh, for uh, how I do this. That's good. And we have a caller from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Larry, are you on the line? Yes, Larry. How are you? I'm good. You have Norman's attention. Fire away, Larry. Great. I heard you mention uh, the date of uh, 1776. And my question is, can you treat, uh, let's say, the stock market that John Dow, uh, Dow Jones or uh, an, an individual market, say the cattle market, can you treat them like an individual uh, life, like uh, chart them from their birth and uh, look for forward, uh, uh, you know, personality traits like you would a, a person? Okay, I, I think I heard his question, Larry. That's yep. a great question. That it goes right to the heart of my methodology of how I treat each, each different markets. Now, commodities have a different treatment than the uh, st stock market or the financials because the financials are tied to the U.S., and therefore there is some natal chart treatment there. However, things like uh, cattle and commodities uh, don't really have a country, and they to, are the best, uh, the best we can tell. Uh, nobody knows what the beginning for uh, many of these commodities are. For example, let's go take an extreme example. Well, what's the beginning for gold? The best, uh, that may be the best answer we can come up with is the beginning of gold is when the Earth was formed uh, some 400, four and a half billion years ago, and we don't even know what day of the week that was. You know? How about but, uh, the trading time at the stocks or uh, at the CME or the uh, Comex? Would that help? Mm, I don't know. I, I, I don't go with that because I found something that works better. Okay, and if that the makes sense. Call me. I'll tell. I'll tell them the big secret. It's very okay. simple. Thank you. Uh, okay, thanks What's for that? calling in, Larry. Uh, we've got to take a little break here, Norman. We'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. As this this one-of-a-kind winter comes to a close and spring approaches, it only seems fitting that now is the perfect time for a spring Tiger Dollar sale. For this week only, we're doubling the bonus that we give when you purchase any amount of Tiger Dollars. Normally, we offer a 10, 15, or 20% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars, but for this week only, we're doubling our special offers and you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. This is one of our best Tiger Dollar sales of the year and won't be around for long. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN product or service and provide a great way to lock in added value on your subscriptions. Tiger Dollars never expire, so whether you're a current subscriber or plan on subscribing at one point in the future, take advantage of this spring Tiger Dollar sale this week only and get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. This sale ends Sunday night, so don't miss out. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Get your Tiger Dollars today and lock in your bonus before this sale passes you by. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with Norm Winsky of Astro Trends, and we have another uh, question for you uh, from another listener who was on uh, last Thursday, and you were mentioning uh, about the importance that we have coming up here in April. Uh, do you want to expand on that, uh, Norman? Because you mentioned uh, something about the market possibly turning down in April. Don't really remember that. I apologize, but I, we just have a few more minutes, and there's some charts I'd like to get to. I am going to talk about something in early April there with the lunar eclipse coming. So if we can go ahead to the charts, maybe that will answer their question. Okay, and which one would you like to look at? Let me just uh, follow up on what we were talking about before. So we had the weekend of the 13th, Saturn went retrograde. The next big date was Uranus, 90 degrees to Pluto. That mm -hmm. was a huge 127-year cycle. They just came to the end of that series there. And so that mm -hmm. was big, and that has to do with uh, uh, cocoa, coffee, copper, hogs, 
stocks and T-bonds. Uh, on the 19th, we had something to do with the U.S., so that also involves the uh, U.S. financials. Keep that in mind. And also then we also had the big uh, uh, solar eclipse on the, on the, uh, after the close on the 19th, the night of the, the early morning on the 20th. So let's just mm-hmm. keep that in mind and go ahead and look at some charts now. So well, what I've done is I've, I've posted all of those charts um, into the uh, Tiger TV so the folks will be able to uh, basically take a look at it. But I think the best way for them to really, you know, pick up on this is to contact you and uh, follow through with, uh, you know, your work because it's uh, it's certainly unusual, it's different, and it's certainly working. So uh, it's up to them to you know, uh, defy human nature and do the work themselves. <laughs> All right. Very quickly, I put a, a chart of the solar eclipse map. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I, I love that chart. In fact, I uh, I want to get that up here so we can take a look at it because it is really an interesting one. Where do you get that stuff from? Uh, it's uh, like a NASA and that sort of thing. Oh, this came out of Earth and Sky magazine, I think, online. Okay, this is the one that shows where it is over the North Atlantic. Right, exactly. Yeah, okay, go so ahead. I, I jokingly said uh, in the letter or something to somebody, uh, you might, you may want to cancel your uh, Titanic uh, trip this summer, right? Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was April 17th that it uh, went down, wasn't it? 19... I, think April, I think April 12th. Yeah, I was on news around. It, it was, uh, oh, well, you know what? That. Because it was it, April 15th. Uh, it I went think down it... right a few days after my father was born. So. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was near tax time. That's all I remember. Okay. Okay, now uh, we only got page, a few. We, let's just look at the charts real quick here. We have the, uh, you can show, see the results here from these uh, planetary events with the different markets. Uh, coffee very near uh, the low of the month, uh, uh, you know, right in the middle of uh, March there when Saturn turned. Also, there was another, the other aspect, the one on the uh, night of the 16th also was big. That was near lows. We're now, I think, about, uh, I don't know where we're at right at the moment, but as of last night, uh, over the weekend, we were about, uh, I think, 13, 14 handles higher. So what's that we're translate to? That's uh, well over $4,000, I think, right, Larry? Something like that. Well, I don't. I don't trade that one, but uh, that's exactly what it is. If you multiply by the cents that you have, do you do anything in three seventy-five a a handle? So oats, Mm -hmm. you can see what happened there, uh, near some lows there on the aspects on the planetary events. Uh, Here's the cocoa, Uh, that green. I put a green bar in there. You see that that came came right off the chart service there to show you where the date was for the uh, the seventeenth would be after the close of the you know the planetary thing was overnight between the. 16 and 17, you can see uh, what's happening there, although I think the cocoa may be now, if it doesn't hold here right now, is likely, uh, if it breaks down here, then it's going to accelerate to the downside. Hops, those, te- uh, those technical charts that you draw up with the uh, with the lines, those are your lines, correct? You just add those to the chart. Everything except the green bar came right off the chart, okay. sir. Okay, we got to got to leave now, Norma, but thank you very oh, much. We'll have you that. on in another, uh, maybe next month, okay? Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us. Norman Winsky of Astro Trends. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.